Hello, ladies. It is me, Alexa Morion, and I am here with Dupe Agbufi um, for another episode of Women of Grace. So, Dupe, I'm so excited that you could join us today. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about, our, about yourself so the ladies can get to know you? Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, so, my name is Madupe Ayubusi, and I am a wife, a mother of three wonderful children. They are Daniel, so <laughs> Ethan, and Rachel. Um, and I am, you know, happy to be alive and here. <laughs> We're, and we're happy to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what um, else would you like to know about me? <laughs> I don't know. How are your kids doing? They're doing great. They're right now watching TV and, you know, messing up the house. <laughs> Who knows? As ch- kids do. Exactly. Oh. So, yeah. Um, I was born in Germany. I grew up in Nigeria. I met my husband in Nigeria. Um, Shagun Ayubusi, and I've heard of him. I <laughs> okay, I'm glad. <laughs> and I moved over here after I got married, or moved over here. Um, and we have been married for almost 12 years now. Wow, congrats, yes. guys! Thank you. Yeah, and yeah, I am a licensed social worker and a mommy and a friend and a daughter and a lover of Jesus Christ. (laughs) Well, thank you for sharing a little bit about yourself with us. So Dupe, you and I have talked a little bit before and um, the topic I want to kind of talk with you now is if you could tell us about this chronic illness that you um, are living with and how, how, how is it living with it? Okay. So um, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis um, in 2015, mm-hmm. 2015, after I had my baby girl, Rachel. Um, first of all, I, if, you know, I'm sure you could Google what rheumatoid arthritis is. It's not arthritis that happens to old people. I'm sorry to say that word, but that's what people have been saying. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, you're so young. You know, I'm like, it's a disease that affects your joints. And, you know, it can be really um, disabling if you don't take good care of it. Anyway, so I, the truth is, I think I noticed something going on when I was pregnant with my son, Ethan. I was like way back in 2013, I noticed some mornings I couldn't get up. I couldn't stand up. I had pains in certain areas. Mm. I couldn't walk so well. And after I had my son, I think, you know, the pain subsided. So, well, you think it's associated with pregnancy. So for Rachel, I noticed at three months, I could barely get out of bed. When I wore, when I got off bed, it was like, you know, excruciating pain on my feet, on my ankles. Um, When I had her, like she was the tiniest of my babies, but I could barely lift her up or carry her. Um, You know, my hands were in such pain. So, um, yeah, that's when I went to the doctor to say there's something going on. I thought this was pregnancy related. It's not pregnancy related how can you help me and then it was actually my OBGYN and she's like uh I think this is actually something arthritic I think you should go to a rheumatologist or something and that was my first time hearing about rheumatoid arthritis I didn't know anything about it and um yeah that was (laughs) I was in school at the time I had three little kids and I was actually doing my internship at school and it was everything all at once, everything oh all at once. And who knows, probably that's what actually set it up because set it off because, you know, they say stress can be a big um, factor. So yeah, when I got diagnosed at first, I was in denial mm-hmm. and I'm like, this is not mine. I can't, I, I can't, I don't have time for this right now. <laughs> 
I like that word. I don't have time for this. Can this not happen? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm like, my life is going great. I, you know, I'm doing really well. I, I have a dream to pursue. I have, you know, a career that I want, I really love and I want to um, pursue. And yeah, things just started going downhill from there. Um, I, at my internships, I would have days where I could barely open the door because of the pain, mm. you know, and that's when I, I was still nursing my baby then. And um, my rheumatologist was like, well, we need to start you on some serious meds because it's a very severe form of RA. And I'm like, what? I just got this diagnosis and now you're telling me it's very severe. Come on, which one? Choose one. Um, but I didn't believe her at the time because I'm like, yeah, it's just pain. It comes and it goes. Most times it's present, but anyway. So fast forward to um, October 2015. Um, I, I began taking meds to treat um, the RA and it stopped working after about three or four months. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then I had to, you know, go up to a higher dose or something, try something else. And I had to stop breastfeeding my daughter as a, as a result of that. So those were kind of like, you know, lots of griefs here and there that I had to let go of. Um, I began losing ability to hold stuff. I found I was fumbling in the kitchen a lot, like dropping stuff um getting clumsy at holding little things there was a day i was ha carrying rachel and i almost dropped her because oh yeah like that you know i think very that's scary when, for you yeah uh, that was when i knew i this was a real problem you know mm -hmm. and i needed to really be serious about um finding a solution for it but in the midst of all of that you know I thank her for my husband. He is an amazing man. Um, he was like my rock through it all. Like at first when I was diagnosed, it's like, well, is this something you're eating? Is this something you're doing? You know, what is this? And we learned about it together and we began praying together, you know, asking God, okay, you need to give us direction um, about this. So yeah that was the beginning of a new journey mm -hmm. sorry my thoughts are, are no, all over the place. no thank you for sharing but yeah if you have any questions yes share. i have go many. ahead um so one of them so you spoke you said that you were praying with your husband would you say that was the moment that you completely surrendered your, this illness to god or was there another moment where you were just like this isn't mine. I can't, I don't know what to do with it. Lord, how to like, was there a moment like a, that you remember distinctly where you just, you know? Um, yeah. So for a long time, I honestly, for a long time, I was in denial. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and denial, not in the sense that I don't have an illness, but in denial in the sense that, well, it's just going to go away the same right. way it came just as mysterious as it came, it's going to go away. Um, and honestly, while in the process of the whole thing, while trying to find out what would work, what medication would work, um, I just saw it as it's not mine. So therefore, don't even, you know, yes, I was living with pain. I was, I was in constant pain. I could not walk and I could not do things like I used to. But the moment that I got to surrender it completely to God was... Um, I'd say pretty much last year mm. when I was like, all right, Lord, I've tried in my power and I have failed. Um, I have done medication. I've tried natural means. I have, I have done everything I can and I need your help. Um, prior to that, I had tried um, going natural and raw for a few times and the last episode I had in that trial process was I could barely walk I could barely get out of bed 
um, like it was really bad. And I could barely take care of myself. My husband had to take care of me. I lost a ton of weight. I wasn't eating. I wasn't, you know, I was in so much pain. Um, my inflammation levels were out of the roof. <laughs> and at that point, I think that was the first time I like reached out to everyone. I posted, I made a post on Facebook. And I reached out to everyone. I'm like, look, I need help. Pray for me. You know, um, many people didn't know what was wrong. I think they, I, there's, a, there's a meme or there's a post on Facebook that says um, autoimmune diseases are like, you look well, you sound all right but there's a lot of chaos going inside of you mm -hmm. going on on the inside of you, you know? So that was it. I, I just remember canceling a lot of play dates, you know, not meeting up with friends. Like it stole away relationships and friendships and play dates for my children. And, you know, and I was fighting so hard to get, get all of those back by my own strength. But I think that was a March last year. I finally said, okay, Lord, if you don't heal me, and if you don't help me fight this, I can't do it on my own. The doctors have tried. I have tried. For the doctors to say, look, we don't know what, how to deal with this. We'll keep trying all the, <laughs> the strongest medications out there. And it's, you know, it works for a short time and then stops. What is going on? So... When it gets to that point where you have like three or diff three different doctors telling you the same thing, you know, you kind of want to take a step back and say, okay, I'm at my wit's end, Lord. And I think that was the time. It was the hardest season for us as a family, you know, not being able to be a mother my kids. My kids many times had to help me around the house, <laughs> you know, um, not being a wife I could be to my husband you know, not being a daughter to my father. My father came over for my graduation and he had to wheel me in a wheelchair around. You know, there's nothing more painful than experiencing things like that. So once I got to that point where I was done, I, I just surrendered to God. I'm like, look, if you want to take me, take me. If you want this to be the end of my life, fine, I'm great. But at this point, I need you to show up in a way that you've never done before, you know. And having a support of friends coming together to pray for me, pray over me, pray with me, family, I mean, they were amazing. If you need a family, come to mind. <laughs> But, you know, like that was, I mean, I had so, I mean, as people rose up to help, you know, they rose up to help in every way, you know, by bringing food over, by helping to clean my house or pick up the kids, you know, and I think that was like the biggest form of blessing after I said, okay, Lord. I'm going to come out and say, I need help, but you have to help me. Mm -hmm. It's like all of a sudden this, you know, a flood of people flooding into my life and um, helping me, praying with me, lifting me up and encouraging me, things like that. So, yeah, I think that was the moment I surrendered everything and said, this is it. I can't do anything. I can't heal myself. I can't help myself. Help me. Yeah. No, it's awesome that God showed up through your support system that yeah. you know, you, you've reached out and everyone was like, let's go. We got you, do they? Yeah, that was sweet. It's, a, it's always a blessing to find out like how, how God will answer your prayers because I feel like it's always a little different than what you anticipate. And then you're like, oh, thank you, God. Yes, yeah. I didn't know I needed this support system. Like, I didn't know I needed this. Like, thank you. Yeah, and, and it was a very humbling experience because, mm -hmm. you know, I... I've always been a very, my siblings will tell you, I've always been a very, by my own person. I do my things, you know, lady, do it yourself kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. independent woman. And, yeah, I got you. yeah, and then having to, you know, surrender my care to other people, that was huge. Mm -hmm. I, 
like before I even told my family how bad it was, it was after my father came over and saw this, how I was, you know, dealing with pain. And then he went home and was like, your daughter is not doing well. <laughs> and told my mom, like, there's something going on. She's not saying anything. I didn't want him to get worried because right. my family is in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. But after then, I'm like, all right, I think I need to reach out for help. And I did. And God helped me <laughs> through people. <laughs> So how has your walk changed from what it was before? Because you, you said when you, um, when you first encountered, like had this illness, you kind of tried to take care of it on your own, on your own terms. And then last year you finally handed it over to God and said, this illness, do with it what you will. Have you noticed a change in yourself or in your journey? Have you felt that you know, your relationship with God has changed and how so? Yeah, um, the biggest change I think I noticed was, I think I just, I I saw God in a way that I had never seen him before. Mm. Um, Not just as, you know, father in heaven or God, but I saw him as compassionate. I saw him as, you know, the one who bears my burdens, like suffering in pain with me. Um, you know, I went to Nigeria last year for a couple of months because I, it was just so bad that I could not um, care for myself and my kids. And so I needed my family. My family actually just, they were like, hey, we got us you. I don't care. Just come over and then recuperate until, you know, you're better. And that was like my, those moments were like my lowest But then there were moments where I met with God, like, as before, you know, um, when you're in so much pain that you can barely get out of bed and you're like, Lord, you know what? I would just like to be able to get up and brush my teeth and look like a human being. And immediately you feel, okay, I have strength to do that. Like I learned to trust him for today, not plan ahead 10 years from now nothing wrong with doing that but like walking with him daily became the biggest thing for me because it's like all right lord i want to eat this because it smells so good but i don't want a reaction i don't want to be crippled after i have a slice of cake my birthday cake (laughs) you know yeah i want to blow out these candles and enjoy the cake lord please (laughs) I'm like, oh, I'm so, that, was like, that was a huge example for me. Like mm-hmm. on my birthday, I, you know, my family's surprise party for me. And I'm like, I can't eat all of this. All I need to eat is just cucumber. And I'm like, come on. You know, walking with God moment by moment was like my biggest takeaway from this whole thing. Where it's like you hear his voice and you obey. You know, my, the Bible says, my sheep hears my voice and it obeys. And I think that was like my biggest thing. Obey him for today. Obey him for now. Obey him for what he's saying to do now, you know. And yeah, that has been, um, it's been helpful. Even feeling better, feeling stronger. I still go back to those days and I, I'm like, Lord, I never want to lose that. I never want to lose that relationship we had when I was in so much pain and when I was down Mm -hmm. because now I'm feeling so good. I feel like, oh, I can take a I want to remember that place of humility and brokenness. Not that I want to be that broken again, but I want to be in that place of surrender where I know that I can't do anything on my own. I have no strength of my own other than you besides you, you know? Yeah. No, I really like what you said. Like that you wanted to remember how broken you felt. Like not that you want to relive it because I'm sure you don't, (laughs) but that you wanted to remember that feeling that, that true connection that you felt with God, that you want that, you want that daily. And, and I, I think that's so key because like, I think you hit it so well when you said like, I'm doing great. I can take over the world. And I think when we get in that mindset, we kind of forgot that 
you know, he already conquered the world for us. Like yes. he's, he's the one that we need to rely on, not yes. ourselves. Like, yes, yeah. we're, we're doing amazing right now, or we're feeling great or however we're on top of the world, but he's there with us and he got us there. And we have to remind yeah. ourselves how, it, how to rely on him, even through the good and the bad. Yeah. Cause I feel like you said it very well, like the bad, it, you, re, you relied on him and you felt this closeness. And I feel like sometimes we forget that in the good. So to remind ourselves of how, how broken we are, even in the good times, not to say like we don't enjoy and rejoice in the good times. That's yeah. not what I'm trying to say. Not what you're trying to say either. It's just to yeah. remember that closeness, to remember the God that gave us these moments. Exactly. And I also really like that you said like to obey him for the, for the day, like today, like what does God want me to do today? What do I need to do today to follow him? And I like that because I feel like us as humans, especially, we're always, and especially as women, we're always constantly worrying about tomorrow or the next day, or, you know, um, what am I going to do with the kids tomorrow? Or what am mm-hmm. I going to, you know, how am I going to help my husband tomorrow? Or like, how am I going to clean this house? I'm going to, how am I going to do my job? Like I have this, pro- like, we're yeah. always constantly worrying about 20 million different things. Cause that's how we are as women. We're always thinking, yeah. but to just focus on today, this moment and just be like, God, help me through this. God, how let me trust you in this right now that I'm doing right now. I think that is so crucial as Christians and something that we need to remind ourselves of. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for sharing that because that is such a great reminder that we need to a remember the low times, but in a positive way to keep that connection, that closeness to God and to also be remember to obey him in the moment in today and not yeah. always have to worry about tomorrow. Cause God says, yeah. don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow exactly. will worry about its own things. Exactly. And I think that sometimes it's hard to do that or to focus on tomorrow to yeah. plan out 10, 10 years in advance. Like what am I going to do? In 10 <laughs> yeah. Years? yeah. Like we need to focus on today and to follow him today. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you for sharing the change that you've noticed in yourself to so this like trust in God, this like, you can tell that you like what you're sharing is, is true for you. And I, I just love, I love that. <laughs> I love hearing these stories where you can see that like what, what people are sharing is how they truly feel about their walk. And I just, I love it. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, I just want like, before we wrap up our time together, do you think, cause I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation, but do you have any advice or encouragement for the women watching or for the people watching, whoever's watching about like, um, about your journey or about what you would want to encourage them with any, anything or anything you want to share just in general. Um, stay awesome. Hot sauce is good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, stay um, awesome. Stay fly. <laughs> um, Love it. But honestly, if you're struggling with something, reach out, mm. you know, Hey, reach out to me. I'm here. I would, I might not be but you know I could lift you up in prayer I could encourage you reach out to someone Mm -hmm. um don't feel like you have to go through that pain alone God has not created us to be isolated and many times when we're in pain we tend to um shut ourselves from the world it's like don't look at me don't you know don't notice my pain and push others away from us so reach out to people reach out to if you don't have a support group, people that support you, look for another one, you know. Um, I think, and especially women who like to do things on their own, you know, it's kind of hard to ask for help. Yeah, it's great being an yeah. independent woman, but you gotta, gotta know yeah. when to depend on someone. Yeah. yeah, and it's not weakness. It's mm-hmm. okay to do that. You know, the, the one thing I learned and I still hold dear is that Christ is... The Bible says that he's close to the broken heart. That means in your weakness, he's closer to you than in your strength, Mm -hmm. you know? So draw closer when you're weak and don't, you know, it's almost like if, okay. It's almost like if I could be weak all the time, I would rather be weak knowing that he's closer to me. Yeah. (laughs) You know, (laughs) But yeah, so, but it's almost, you know, you have to come to him. Even for me now, like, yes, I'm feeling better, but I have to go back to him saying, Lord, I can't do it on my own. Mm -hmm. You know, relying on, relying on God. He gives wisdom. He gives wisdom when you're, when you ask him. Like for me, I kept trying different things. 
when I started asking God for help, he started showing me things, you know, and the way God answers prayers sometimes is not just like magic. He brings ideas to you. He thoughts your way. He brings people your way Mm -hmm. who tell you about different things. And then you research those things. Then, you know, you, you take steps towards that. So yes, you know, ask God for help. He, he is, he knows all things. The Bible says, if we lack wisdom, ask and he will give you. Um, yeah. And then I'll say, honestly, leave freely of any hurt or grudges. Mm, Cause yeah. one thing I had to do was constantly search myself and say, is there any hidden, you know, resentment or grudge that I hold inside of me? Um, you have, you don't know when your last day will be. You don't know when it will be your turn to stand before the King of Kings and, you know, just don't harbor those things inside because honestly, even science says that that is like the breeding ground ailments and diseases and stuff. Anyway, so if you're hurting, if you're in pain, if you're depressed, whatever, just reach out to someone, reach out to me, reach out to someone, reach out to anyone. Um, There are people who would love you if they don't know you yet. There are people who would lift you up. There are people who have been through what you're going through and you know, you need to know you're not alone. Yes. And reach out to me. I'm totally here. Yeah. (laughs) Always here. No, but thank you for that advice. I also like uh, what you said when you when you said like, if I could be weak all the time, so God could be near me, I'd take that. And I think that's true. I feel like in our weakness, God shines the most. And isn't that what we want? Like to show it's not about our strength or our abilities or how amazing we are. uh, Because let's be real, Dubé, we are amazing. But (laughs) yes, we are. It's, we are amazing because God has made us that way. And if we can show that, that glow that he gives us, that power, that, that light to be truly the light of the world, if that means me being weak all the time, I'm down for it. <laughs> Let me be weak all the yeah. time. If that means that God's power shines through, if, if that means that others see him, yeah. even in my weakness. And that's hard because I, I feel like I'm very similar with you, Dupe. I feel like I'm in a very independent woman. So <laughs> asking for help is not always natural, but it's, you're right. It's something that we need to do. Like if you are struggling, you reach out. It's not weakness. In fact, I would argue it's a strength because it, it shows that you know what you need and you need God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all need Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dubai, thank you so much for joining me today. I, I love this conversation. It has been truly a blessing having you on. Thank you. And I hope that you ladies have enjoyed it just as much as I have. And I can't wait to see you all for our next episode. So bye, ladies. Bye.